Hi everyone, and welcome to Exploring the Build. If you just found this place, then welcome. And if you're returning, I'm glad to have you back. I'm Alex, and this is my channel where we explore and theory craft different character builds for Dungeons and Dragons 5e. Today, we are doing a quick build. We'll be exploring a briefly summarized character build for Dungeons and Dragons. And as always with quick builds, if there are ever any specific builds that you want to see me explore in the future, be sure to let me know in the comments below. The concept for our build today is around a Master of Disguise. Someone who is very adept at charisma type situations, including just interacting with NPCs as like a sort of party face, or someone who is good at infiltrating, but instead of infiltrating through the usual idea of like a rogue sneaking around trying not to be seen and maybe lock picking or disarming traps to get to where they need to be, we're just going to stroll in disguised as someone completely different using a false identity to get whatever we need. We're going to be not just a master of disguise, but an expert impersonator or imposter. By the end of the build, we'll have some very high bonuses and abilities to actually be able to impersonate other NPCs in our games. We'll have some abilities in combat, so we're not totally a social encounter based character, but this is going to be a character with a bit more of a social lean. We're going to be able to use identities the same way a ventriloquist would use puppets. I actually played this character more or less in my own D&D campaign a few years back, and it is admittedly a little change in this video than what I played them with. I didn't really skew them as much for combat back then, whereas this build is going to have a few more bonuses to combat, but the general idea is going to be the same. We're going to be someone who is so good at taking on other NPC identities that hopefully no one will ever know who we actually are. Starting in character creation, for our lineage, we are going to pick the Changeling lineage from Eberron. A Changeling gets a plus two bonus to Charisma and plus one to one other ability score of our choice. And those increases are perfectly fine for us, so we're just going to leave them as is. We're also going to gain two skills of our choice from a select list, and that's going to help us become a very skilled character, especially with our classes we're picking up later on. Finally, the main feature that a Changeling gets is the ability to shape change, or at least sort of shape change. We can just casually change our appearance as well as our voice as an action. That means that it can technically be done in combat, though really we're going to be saving it for out of combat. We don't even need a spell like Disguise Self. We don't actually need to invest in a Disguise Kit, though we could if we want to. We can just casually take on the appearance of any other humanoid creature within reason. It doesn't change our clothes, so there will be some issues with that that we're going to have to face but we'll get to that later. For our background, we want some sort of background that gives us skills that we don't get from being a changeling, and that thematically would work for a face type character, or at least someone who's very good in charisma type settings. For us, I'm going to say that is going to be charlatan, but you can pick your favorite. For our stats, we don't need a lot. There's only a few important ones that actually really matter. We're going to be putting the plus two into charisma, of course, since it has to go there, and our plus one that we get for free is going to go into dexterity. After point by, we should have the following ability scores. 8 Strength, 16 Dexterity, 14 Constitution, 10 Intelligence, 8 Wisdom, and 17 Charisma. Feel free to swap those around. Just try to leave Charisma as our best and Dexterity as our second best, relatively. For the actual level breakdown of the build, we're going to start with levels 1 to 10. Levels 1 to 10 are very straightforward. We're taking 6 levels of Bard, 4 levels of Rogue and we'll probably take the levels of Rogue much later. We want the Bard stuff first. For our Bard subclass, we're going to pick the College of Whispers Bard. That's going to give us three main features, two right away and one at level six. Two features we get are Words of Terror and Psychic Blades. Psychic Blades is more of a combat feature, so I'll talk about that later when we get to our Rogue and our eventual combat playstyle. But Words of Terror is a pretty nice social encounter feature. If we spend a minute, outside of combat, chatting with an NPC, we can make a save at the end of that conversation to just make them frightened for one hour. That has some pretty interesting implications as it just means that we can manipulate other NPCs when we take this subclass. Sixth level ability though is what we're really shooting for, and that is Mantle of Whispers. Mantle of Whispers says that any time that we kill an enemy, we can capture their shadow. When we do so, we can then later use the shadow to apply to ourself, which technically that feature alone disguises us as that NPC we killed. We gain a flat plus five bonus to any deception checks we make to make other NPCs think that we are that NPC that we killed. Now before this, at level four for our first ability score improvement slash feat, 
we're going to want to have picked up actor. And the reason for this is because actor allows us to one, round off our charisma at 18, which is really nice. And two, it allows us to just gain advantage on any check we make to convince another character that we are someone else. Essentially, like we're acting, or in our case, impersonating. Important here to say that as a bard as well, we'll eventually have gotten expertise. And for our expertise, we're going to want to have taken deception for sure, and then probably any other charisma skill. We can pick up other skills to be experts in once we get to rogue, but for now we definitely want deception. With all this said, right at level 6 when we get Mantle of Whispers, if we kill an enemy and we take their shadow, we have an advantage and plus 15 on any deception check we make to impersonate that NPC later on. That is an absurd bonus for level 6, but it is admittedly very specialized. Levels 7 to 10 are our four levels in Rogue. And from there we get another round of expertise, so pick some more skills to become an expert in. As well we gain Sneak Attack, which is going to be our more damage focus. And finally we're going to gain our subclass and another Ability Score Improvement slash Feat. For the Ability Score Improvement slash Feat, I would recommend either increasing your Dexterity to be 18 to match your Charisma, or just capping out your Charisma, because either one of those would be very effective. For our subclass, we're going to want to take Assassin. Once we are an Assassin, our general playstyle in combat is going to hopefully be that we will walk up disguised as someone else as a changeling, we're going to impersonate that person to the best of our ability at least, and then we're going to attack whoever we're trying to get into combat with. But the general idea is we want surprise, because once we have surprise, any attack against that creature is an automatic crit. With that in mind, when we would hit them, hopefully, since we would have advantage and everything else from the assassinate feature, we would be able to not just crit on a weapon attack plus sneak attack, we could also dump Psychic Blades into that ability as well. This is where Psychic Blades does come in, as it's kind of like a Paladin Smite feature. We can just use a Bardic Inspiration to, instead of actually inspire someone, just deal some extra Psychic damage on top of a regular attack. That means if somebody were using like a Short Sword, we would deal a D6 for the Short Sword, 2d6 for sneak attack, and dump an extra 3d6 from psychic blades. And dump in an extra 3d6 from psychic blades. That would be 6d6 on a regular hit total, however because it would be an automatic crit, hopefully, we would actually make it 12d6, which is an insane amount and would hopefully just kill that NPC outright. We could then capture their shadow and begin impersonating them, and we could do it a lot better since we would actually have their shadow. For levels 11 to 20, we're just pretty much going to do the opposite of what we did for levels 1 to 10. We're going to take 6 levels in Rogue, and then 4 levels in Bard, to make us an even 10-10 split. I will say that the build actually didn't really come online in full until level 10. And admittedly, when I played this character, I had started at a higher level around 10, so it wasn't that much of a struggle getting up to what I was supposed to be able to do with all the impersonation and social interaction. With all that in mind, going up the rest of the levels, our main purpose of getting to a 10-10 split is to increase our Psychic Blades to be 5d6 on a use instead of just the 3d6. We'll also gain some more powerful utility spells from Bard. Nothing world-breaking, but still pretty powerful. And then Rogue 10 gives us Sneak Attack, plus the extra Assassin features that actually make us an expert infiltrator. We will miss out on Reliable Talent, unfortunately, but we do gain a full set of 5 Ability Score Improvements slash Feats, which we've already used two of, so those last three can be used to cap our dexterity, our charisma, and increase our constitution by plus two to have a few more hit points, and hopefully with all those stats being relatively good, we will be somewhat reliable in combat. Other than that, let's look at the build and summarize it. We are definitely the party face slash faces, since we are a master of disguise. We can turn into anyone we want and use their identity to our own benefit, and we have a very high charisma to back that up. We also have a very high dexterity and plenty of expertise, so we have a lot of out-of-combat utility as well. Plenty of features that also give us bonuses to being other people, plus some bonuses to our damage in the first round of combat, which will hopefully let us actually help our party out in those situations. We are a bit more of a social lean character, and we would really excel in a urban campaign setting or like an intrigue setting, but even in any given D&D campaign setting, we are going to be the go-to for any social encounter that happens during that campaign, and that's perfectly fine with us. To exclusively look at the numbers, at level 20, we have a grand total of plus 22 with advantage 
whenever we make a deception check to impersonate an NPC, admittedly while we have their shadow up. Without the shadow though, that's still a plus 17 with advantage to pretend to be that NPC. And even then, it's just a plus 17 on all charisma-based checks that we have expertise in. Those are really awesome numbers for our social interaction. And I think that that really reflects that we're not just taking on a disguise of a separate identity. We are becoming that identity. For our damage, assuming our disguise or impersonation is so good that we can surprise an enemy, then when we hit them with a weapon attack, sneak attack, and dump a use of our psychic blades feature into them, we can hit them for a total of 11 d6 damage or rather 22d6 because of the assassin's auto crit. To compare this to my old character, the ventriloquist that I actually played in game, we can still do everything they did, but we're actually just a bit better in combat. See, when I played this character, I took the mastermind rogue instead of assassin and made them a bit more of a support slash tactician character rather than a lethal killer. Both characters have some powerful bard spells, which can be used really effectively as control. And that's also almost just as important as damage. Overall, I'm very happy with how this build can be pushed to the absolute limits of not just infiltration, but also of being an assassin and doing first round combat damage. And technically, we might be able to mix and match some more rogue and bard subclasses to come up with even more crazy combinations. But for now, I like this combination as just an infiltrator type character who is able to be a ventriloquist of identities. Let me know what you thought of the build or what you would change to get closer to the theme of an infiltrator or party face character. Thank you so much for coming on the journey with me, and I hope to see you in the next one.